All right, the point of this question is to determine the uh, minimum speed in order for something moving in a vertical circle to complete the circle. What's the minimum speed at the top for this tennis ball to go all the way around in a circle and not become a projectile? If you're not going fast enough, the tension in the string goes slack, it goes to zero, and the ball is no longer going in a circle. If that happens before it gets to the top, it's going to be going to a parabola, all right, because it will go into free fall. Boom. All right. So it, think of a couple of examples, other examples. Say you have a bucket of water and you're going around with a bucket of water. How fast do you have to go at the top so the water doesn't come down and get you all wet, all right? Because at the top, if you're going in a circle at the top and the, going around at the top, the water's going that way, not down. It's going that way. Just keep going around in a circle and you'll be all right. But there has to be some, at least some minimum speed so the water doesn't become a projectile and get you all wet. The way we're going to look at this, let's say you have a car, you know, like uh, some daredevil going around a loop. What minimum speed must this be traveling at so that it continues in a circle? Because if it, if it goes too slow, the wheels will come, will no longer be in, in contact with the, um, with the track with the road or whatever it is, and it'll fall and become a projectile. That's bad. So what minimum speed must it have at the top so that it continues all the way around in a circle and doesn't go airborne? Okay. V-min. That's what we're looking for. Well, if you draw a force diagram for something like this, you actually have the weight pushing down. And you also have the road, or whatever this thing is here, all right, pushing down on the vehicle, all right, at all points. It's pushing away, that makes it's really messy. So it's a normal force pushing down on the wheels. It's the force of the track down on the bottom of the wheels. If you're going on a roller coaster, it's the force of your chair at that point, pushing down on your body. So there are two downward forces. You've got your weight, which is always directed downwards. And you also have normal force, the force of whatever surface is pushing down on you, or the car, or whichever you're looking at. So here's your force diagram. So those are both centripetal, because the center of the circle is right here. The center of the circle is right there. Well, let's just say, for the heck of it, that the radius of this loop is uh, 22 meters. Eh, yeah, that's fine, 22 meters and you're going around on some roller coaster. What's the minimum speed in case you forgot to fasten your seatbelt so you don't fall out? This could also be somebody like in an airplane doing some aerobatics. And they, what's the minimum speed so they don't go plump and fall out? OK, there's your force diagram. So your net centripetal force is the sum of everything pointed down. There are two of them, the weight plus the normal force. And that is going to equal, of course, centripetal force is m v squared all over r, right? m times a c. Well, the slower you go, when you're going in a circle, when you're in a circle, you don't change the radius of the circle, you don't change your mass, and you don't change your weight. So the slower you go, the less normal force acts on the car, the, the, the force of the track down on the car wheels decreases as you slow down. The slower you go, that gets smaller. Well, the, the smallest this can ever get is zero at the very top. We're calculating this at the very, very top. So the, slow, the smallest I could ever get is zero. So what speed makes that zero? That's what we're going to look for. So V minimum makes normal force zero. What speed corresponds to just, just making the normal force zero? If you go any slower than that, you're going to, at the top, you're going to go into free fall, and that's not what you want to happen. You can go faster than that. You can go faster, all right? But you can't go any slower than this, because otherwise you go into free fall. So in order to do this, it's actually an easy calculation. Set normal force equal to zero. Therefore, you know that weight is mass times g. So mass times g, that's weight, mass times g, equals centripetal acceleration, uh, sorry, centripetal force, mass times centripetal acceleration, v squared over r, 
Notice you have m on both sides of the equation, so those cancel. So the interesting thing here is that v squared over r, as you all know, is centripetal acceleration, ac, is provided by g, 9.8 meters per second squared. Solve for v. This is v min, minimum speed, equals the square root of g times r, which is the square root of 9.8 times 22, which comes out to be, see, I forgot to calculate this, 9.8 times, square, square root of 9.8 times 22, is 14.7 meters per second. About 30 miles per hour. If you go any slower than that, like 14.5 meters per second, uh-oh, you'll go, you'll become airborne. <laughs> 